peace of Christ to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, let us uh, reflect on the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 8, verses 18 to 22. The cost of following Jesus. Now, when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So here we see uh, the very first um, scripture says, Now when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. So now this was, um, we see in Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7, the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus is preaching. And come Matthew 8 is an account of all the all the uh, miracles that Jesus was doing. We know of the cleansing of the leper. We see uh, Peter's mother-in-law being healed. And when she was healed, there were many people who were brought in and Jesus healed all of them. We also know that the centurion's servant was healed. So Jesus was seen now as someone who has authority, who has power. And uh, he was going about healing the sick, uh, casting out demons. So the people around him, the crowd was following him. And as we see the end of Matthew 7, in Matthew 7 verses 29, uh, it is written that, For he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. So we see here that Jesus was teaching with authority. Jesus was having a lot of crowd who was following him. Who were the scribes? Now the word of God says that he was teaching them, but not as their scribes. Now scribes were a, a religious group. They were the teachers of the law. And these were the, the people who would make the copies of the Torah, the, the sacred manuscripts. And um, they were known as uh, people who would teach according to the law. But Jesus himself says in Matthew 23 that the scribes and the Pharisees, they sit on Moses' sit. But nevertheless, even though they sit there and they teach you, the Lord said they teach you, you follow them. You follow what they teach. The, the word of God tells us in Matthew 23 verses 3, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. So these scribes were uh, the religious group of people who were the teachers of the law, the law of Moses. And they were teaching, but they were not practicing. So when Jesus went about teaching and teaching with authority, they were offended in Jesus. They were offended in Jesus. However, we see here that there is one scribe who comes to Jesus and he approaches Jesus and he says, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Now, Jesus knew the intent of the heart condition. He knows everyone. The Lord knows what is there in our heart. So the Lord knew his intention. He knew that these are a group of people who don't practice what they preach. They are, they are offended in Jesus at the same time now coming and telling Jesus. So it would have been the popularity that Jesus was earning by ways of him working out miracles. And so Jesus tells him that, you know, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. So to be a follower of Jesus, you need to be prepared to give up on everything. You cannot be thinking of being um, limiting yourself to all that you possess, holding fast to all that you have 
and then say, I would also want to follow Jesus. So uh, there is a cost to discipleship. The cost to discipleship involves giving up. The cost to discipleship uh, involves dying to self. Because the Lord of Lords, if he has no place to lay his head, that is the cost of discipleship. That is the cost of following Jesus. That we have to die to self and follow him. So when he says that, we see that there is another disciple of the Lord who, who says, um, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Now, what was the situation? They were, uh, the, the Lord was teaching. And now Jesus said, let us go across. Let us go to the other side. So they had to move from where they were. They had to go to another place. So this disciple, now when we say in, in Matthew 8, 21, it says another disciple. So this person was already um, with Jesus. He was following Jesus. But when it came that he had to move from where he was and go to another place to follow Jesus, he puts up his condition and says, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And uh, basically what, what it meant was that when, when, when would these people bury their father? Of course, when the person is dead. Now, if, if this person was following Jesus, he was with the Lord before they could be asked to go on the other side. That means he was spending time with the Lord. But when it came to follow Jesus and move along with him, he realized that he has to go and bury his father. Means he was actually considering when his father dies, he would be inheriting whatever his father has. So before going along with Jesus to another place, he was making um, or giving consideration to his duties, knowing that he would inherit the, uh, the inheritance or the wealth of his father upon his death because they could inherit only when the father dies. But Jesus, understanding the heart condition, he says to, the, to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Now, is Jesus, is Jesus against um, people honoring their parents and giving them a decent burial? No. The Lord knew his heart condition. So he says, when, when he refers to let the dead bury their own dead, he's actually referring to let those who are spiritually dead bury those who are physically dead. Now, when we, when we look at Matthew 8.22, in Matthew 8, 22, it, it ends it saying, let the dead bury their own dead. But a, a similar account in, in uh, the book of, uh, in, in the gospel of Luke, we see that in Luke, the, the word of God tells us that um, in, in Luke 9, 60, the word of God says, uh, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. So what is it that the Lord is expecting of his disciples? What is that the Lord is expecting of his followers? The, the expectation of the followers of the Lord is that they go and they proclaim the kingdom of God. It calls for a commitment. It calls for putting aside everything else and going with the gospel of Christ. If we look at the, 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 the theme for the catechetical year that is taken it is taken from Mark 16 verses 15, which says, go proclaim the good news. It is in line with the same thing that the Lord tells us, we who call ourselves as disciples, as followers, we are called to go and proclaim the kingdom of God. So it is, it is required for us to introspect and see, do I love Jesus? Yes, I do. Do I pray? Yes. Maybe the answer is yes, I do. But what about the call of the Lord? If you are my followers, you go and you proclaim the kingdom of God. Am I doing it? It's worthwhile to give consideration in seed. Am I doing what the Lord has called me to do? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So let us close with a short thanksgiving prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our loving Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. Lord, we thank you that in your Son, Jesus Christ, 
we have life, we have eternal life. Thank you, Lord, that as we seek, as we seek you and your kingdom and your righteousness, everything else is added unto us. Lord, let us reflect on your word which says, go, proclaim the gospel. Let us know that there is a call on our life. Now that we are citizens of heaven, now that we are ambassadors of Christ, we are called to go out with the gospel of Christ so that souls are won for the kingdom, so that salvation is received. Thank you, Jesus. Abba Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.